Okay, so we're day four. Um, I just finished up a, a little business luncheon at a cute little diner, and I was coaching her. She'll watch this later, so hi, Karen. Um, I was coaching her about, uh, we've been working on rewiring some of the way that she thinks and her limiting beliefs, and uh, she wrote down, she told me that she wrote down in her journal that she was going to be a million-dollar entrepreneur. And I said to her, by when? <laughs> and she says, I haven't written that down yet. I'm like, okay, well, should we try 2020? <laughs> and she was like, ooh. I'm like, well, you have to have a date. Because otherwise, you, know, you all know how the brain procrastinates, right? Even if 2020 seems out of reach, um, I went on to say, you know, there are people in this world, not just one, but many people in this world that have gone from zero to a billion in 12 months. Think about that, you guys. Zero to a billion in 12 months. We have people that we know that have gone from zero to a million, zero to 100,000, zero to whatever. You've got to name it and claim it. You've got to write it down. You've got to be clear on what it is, when it's going to happen by, what's it going to require in terms of who do you need to become to make that happen. And then what are those practices that you need to put into place that support you towards the goal? And again, the goal, the same um, thing can be said, like we said yesterday, we we're talking about the desire. The desire is what I believe that's, that's directly um, in your heart from God. And he puts that in your heart because we each are meant to create different things in this world. And then we take the inspired action according to his plan. So in my book, wealth is simply a representation of me being faithful. Wendy, add to that. Absolutely. Well, and then back <laughs> to back to the beliefs. Um, I heard today that a belief is simply a chronic thought that we just repeat. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. when we take these like words or saying, and then we just break them down into something that is so simple. It's mm -hmm. like stupid simple. Like, okay, well, if that limiting belief is just a chronic thought, let's just change the chronic thought because it's yeah. so, and it's so doable. I love that. Right. And I love how you always tie a date to it. I think mm -hmm. that's so amazing. And I will never forget. I will never, ever, ever forget when, um, there was one moment when we were talking about your super fast success with Lavelle and yeah. you were having a conversation with someone else and I was just listening in and it was tied. The conversation was tied around to the income that you were making. And you said, cause someone was like asking you like, how, how did that happen? Mm. And you yeah. said, it was so amazing. You said, I'll, I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. And you said, I was already the woman I needed to be, to be yeah. able to, attract and sustain and be responsible for that amount of money. And I was like, mm -hmm. like literally the heavens opened up, balloons fell down, confetti fell <laughs> And I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. Like that. So that I love mm -hmm. how you say that. Who do I need to become? And so whenever I come into a situation, because I don't look at trials and tribulations as things to defeat us, I, I don't ask why is this happening to me? I ask, who do I need to become through this process? Yep. Because it's about falling in love with the journey. Mm -hmm. Totally. 100%. So the secret to attracting wealth, hello, have you all figured it out yet? What do you think it is? Write it in your journal. What do you think the secret to attracting wealth is? Write it in your journal and then type it in the comments. Um, because here's the thing. If you're not at the place where you want to be financially, then it's my guess you aren't applying this to your life every single day. And Wendy gave you a hint. She said that a belief is a chronic thought. And I don't know if you know this, but on average, people rethink the same thoughts 90% of the time. Like, I mean... 90% of the thoughts they think are the same thoughts day in and day out, 90%. So nine out of 10 thoughts you have today will be the same that you think again tomorrow. Um, okay. I, when I think about that, I think, okay, that's pretty cool. What an amazing opportunity. I need to increase my odds. <laughs> I need to have new thoughts. Do you see? Incredible. 
So now here's the other piece of that equation, those statistics. 75% of the thoughts that people engage in are negative self-talk. Negative self-talk. We all know what happens to kids if they're spoken to negatively all the time, right? Yep. Go ahead. Which it's a low vibration. Mm -hmm. So what then do you attract? Because you are focusing right. And you are expanding and you mm -hmm. are asking for more of that low vibration, those negative yeah. thoughts. So what is the one thing I can already, I can hear people already going, okay, yes, that's me. How do I get out of that? The <laughs> one thing that you can easily do to shift that, like in an instant, is go into gratitude because gratitude is one of the highest vibrational energy things <laughs> uh -huh. is you just go into gratitude because that will instantly in a moment regardless of how awful your life is what you're spinning out of control overwhelm whatever story you're telling yourself because that's that's what it is is it's a story that we yes. we tell ourselves and then we believe is going into that gratitude you always have something to be grateful for if you woke up in a bed you have something to be grateful for. If you woke up in a house with heat, you have something to be grateful for. If you just had a meal within the last three to five hours, you have something to be grateful for. If you just work on flooding yourself with that gratitude, you now have entered into a different vibrational, vibration level of energy. And then that is how you just like instantly switch that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So remember yesterday when we were talking about how your mood is directly tied to your ability to make money? That is, if you're, if you're down in the dumps, that's having a low vibration. That means you don't attract abundance and wealth into your life, right? Vibration is literally just, it's, it's where, where you are energetically because we're all energetic beings, right? We've proven that they can put um, sensors on the body and detect the energy currents in the body. So you can change that through your thinking. That's the power of the mind. So that's what I, when I asked you, what's the number one way that you attract wealth is you harness the power of your mind and you get that power in alignment with your soul and your soul's calling. And then listening to God, that's your intuition. Hello, jackpot, right? That's like winning the lottery. Now, here's the cool thing about, well, I was going to say, here's the cool thing about winning the lottery in that sense is you actually have now become the person who is a six-figure earner. You become the person who is the million-dollar earner. And here's the thing. You're not going to go sabotage it. You're not going to go ending up throwing it all away. You're not going to go ending up going bankrupt. Or having some other craziness happen, like it happens to, I think the number is 90% of people who earn or win the lottery lose it all within 12 months. Why? Why? Low vibration. They're not an energetic match for that kind of money. Do you see? Think about that. Pretty powerful stuff. So, did you have something you're going to say? <laughs> so if, if then you're, um, now your brain is starting to go, okay, well, how do I harness this power? Because here's the truth of the matter. You all, we, Wendy and I, each of you watching this video, we all have opportunity at our fingertips, like no other time in history, no other time in history have this many people here in the United States had all of their basic needs met. I mean, of course, we still have some unfortunate few who do not, but the majority do. They take it for granted. They sit back in apathy, waiting for somebody else to solve their problems, give them a handout, increase the public assistance, blah, 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 right? Am I right? Think about this. And then you know, if you want to consider the tax code, did you know that the tax code was written for the entrepreneur? Written for the entrepreneur. Are we teaching entrepreneurism and mindset in schools? Do you see how this is so backwards? Do you see how you have not been prepared for this? And it's not your fault. However, 
you have now come to this point in time where you have had your awakening to your potential. And it's all divine. You're on this video right now watching it for a reason. I don't know how you found it. I don't know like what happened in your life to get you here in this moment. But listen, you're here because you are meant to step up in to the person you're, that God designed you to be, right? And it's time to up level, go to the next level of your potential. In order to do that, though, you have to be willing to take ownership of how you've participated in creating the life you're living today that you're not happy with. And it doesn't matter how successful you become or how spiritually connected you are. You'll still find yourself with struggles or lack or doubt or fear, disempowering thinking, right? That's normal because we're human. So in, this is what I notice very often entrepreneurs do is they want the results right now. But they're not willing to go through the challenges and learn from them. Instead, they subscribe to the cultural conditioning. Cultural conditioning, you all, that means um, the accepted truths that we live our lives by, right? Where it's taught in schools, it's taught through the media, it's taught through our families, generation after generation, the accepted truths, right? You just accept them as fact. Uh, I want you to write in your journal now, what is one of these accepted truths that you have made true for you? You've adopted it. Uh, maybe even subconsciously you didn't even realize it. What are one of those truths? Write them down in your journal. Write them into the comments here if you wouldn't mind. And let's discuss some of that because creating your freedom stems from taking ownership of your participation in what you've created. Uh, we could even say, what are your beliefs around money or people who are wealthy, right? Do you talk about our president and how he only makes laws to benefit wealthy people and blah, 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 nag, nag, nag? Do you? If you participate in that at all, you actually take away from your ability to create a financial future for your family because abundance can be found everywhere. And when we judge others and what they do and how they create wealth, we actually stop ourselves from the ability to create it ourselves because in our subconscious mind, we've made it wrong. And, and your subconscious mind does not want to be seen as wrong because when you're wrong, you're outcast. And think about this. In the olden days, in the olden days, there would be walls around the city. And, and there are still some parts of the world like this, right? In India, for example, in some of the areas where we build schools, these areas, um, when people are outcast for not subscribing to the common group think, they are outcast beyond the walls. It's very unsafe. You can be murdered, killed by a wild animal, you know, whatever. So we do have this deeply rooted fear of not being accepted and being outcast. However, I want you to identify where that shows up for you in your business in creating freedom, even if that's tied directly to your belief in yourself because yes, it is directly tied. Um, I want you to consider though, how does that keep you stuck? And is it true for you today? Okay, think, of, think that one through for me. Um, does anyone have any comments? Just unmute if you do. I know, we're throwing a lot at you. You guys, I can see your faces right now. You're like, what the heck? My mind is blown. <laughs> That's normal. This is just the first step in the process to your freedom, my friends. Let me even see who's on with us today. Shauna Ray says, yes, absolutely. Good, good, good. Belief is the secret. Mindset. Love it. Okay. So, Wendy, anything to add to that? Oh, Ashley asks, what am I supposed to ask myself? Ask yourself, Ashley, what are the, what are the beliefs in our culture that you have adopted as a fact, but yet is holding you back from your truest potential and freedom? Uh, one of the ones I can think of, you guys, is you go to school, then you go to college, 
then you get a job, then you buy a house with a white picket fence, you have a mortgage. So now you have student loan debt and mortgage payments to make. <laughs> and there's a maximum usually that you are capable of earning according to whatever degree or career you're in. Like you, like you've got a ceiling, you can't go beyond it just because of the way the thing's structured. So then you're kind of stuck, right? How do you, how do you increase your potential when you have a nine to five job that you only earn X amount of dollars and then you have to pay Z amount of dollars into all the debt because you just believed that that was the way everyone does it here in the United States, right? You just believed it. And then you were, woke up one day and you're like, wait a minute, that is not true for me. <laughs> that was me, you guys. That was me. I had one baby um, and I was pregnant with the second baby and I was working as a teacher. My husband going back to school to get his big six figure job. And oh my goodness, we started taking on massive debt. We had a house we couldn't sell in the, when the economy crashed. And guess what? We had to live on public assistance. I had to go down there to that public assistance office with my caseworker every week to meet about things and get my food stamps, yay. But whatever, it worked, it worked for us. It gave me the ability to think, you know what? I don't wanna be a teacher anymore because I can only earn $25,000 a year. Like, that's not acceptable. I want to be a person who can earn $25,000 a day. Why did I think that? Being a mom in a small town in Montana, I don't know. Because God gave me that desire, right? And then I believed it. And then I started asking questions. Well, how can I create it? So rather than thinking the same limited 90% of the same thinking day in and day out of the same negative self-talk, right? I started to ask questions. So if you want to change where you're at, you want to change your thinking, get in the habit of asking questions Can because you that's what will create the future. Yeah, go ahead. Expand on when we have, because I feel like some people may have a disconnect between having that desire and, and being like, yes, I have this desire and I believe it's true for me, but then having the disconnect with the money piece. And that truly it's supposed to be tied together because when we are given that desire, that money of that desire has already been allocated to us in mm -hmm. this God given earth and all of his glory and universe. <laughs> like it's already yeah. there. It's, it's already de designed for us. It's just a matter of if we are open and willing to receive it and that there's more than enough. Mm hmm. Can you talk more about that? <laughs> okay. So basically, when I was, when, when, okay, so here I am. I'll take you back. When I was on the public assistance, you know, I was a teacher. I was, you guys, substitute teaching, making $50 a day. So, and I know that's a lot, of money, a lot of money to a lot of people. At that time, that was a lot of money to, to us, right? I was taking my kids to a daycare that, you know, she ran out of her mobile home that's fine right it was where i was at that time and so do you think though that when i had this this thought of i need to create my own business and i'm going to be a millionaire someday that that was not a huge disconnect like for somebody who's on food stamps who takes her kids to a mobile home daycare and right it just doesn't like that doesn't make a but it, mentally it makes no sense like why would someone think like that well i did for some reason that became Hang on a second. I got to mute your audio, Sherry. There we go. Um, for some reason, that became like, I was like, huh, I guess I had this thought. You know, then I started to pray about it, meditate on it, write in my journal about it, ask, where is this coming from? Why do I believe this? Well, ultimately, I came to the answer that um, if I created that kind of success, that I would be able to give really, really big in parts of the world that need financial support. And I had a hard time because I used to always want to be humble and, you know, Christian. And uh, there's a belief that I held that was around, you can't be humble, Christian and wealthy. Who believes that? Right? Don't you believe that being wealthy makes people selfish? Right? You look at somebody who has a Louis Vuitton handbag, for example, and you think, what a waste of money, right? Mm -hmm. That used to be me. 
as I now sit in my Lexus and have my Louis Vuitton on the seat next to me. Now, why do I share that? Because those were beliefs that I had to overcome. And I believe that you can be wealthy and give big in the world. Okay, so for example, when I was living on food stamps, probably buying a Louis Vuitton handbag would have been a poor choice. <laughs> and there probably wasn't a lot of money that I could have given as a result because I didn't have the funds to allocate to giving and to buying something nice for myself because I didn't have any income. So clearly that's a bad idea for me then. Today, when I when making the kind of income I do make today, I can build schools, I can, I can uh, donate money to the food bank, I can buy a Louis Vuitton handbag. There's nothing wrong with that. The more money I make and raise my vibration, the more money I can give and help others. Now, here's the thing that I want you to let, drop this in to your belief system. When you hold yourself you know, back from your truest potential and that financial abundance, you actually are creating less financial opportunity for other people in the world. When you sell yourself short on your gifts and you sabotage and you don't earn at the level that you should be earning, do you see that? You're not actually able then to give big in the world. So by stepping into my gifts and creating a business that became highly profitable, I actually was able to do more good in the world than I would have otherwise. And once I got that, that everything changed for me. Because then I was like, well, yeah, I have to do this because I believe God has uniquely gifted me in certain ways so that I can create impact in the world. Now, I struggled for some time about leaving my profession of teaching because I was like, oh, I have to have the impact on the students in the classroom, right? And that's true. However, God called me to teach my kids at home and to do things like we're doing here on the Zoom teaching you guys, planting this seed for you. And I couldn't have done that had I just been in a classroom of third graders every day, right? But I had to wrestle with this belief system that being a teacher was humble and honorable and blah, 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 right? Whatever it was. I had to wrestle with that and overcome it and then realize that actually stepping into my greatness and earning the kind of money that God intended for me to earn was humble because I am his servant, right? That's what's humble, is the prompting and taking the inspired action as a result. Not in my mind saying, oh yeah, but if I become wealthy, then I will be selfish and rude and uncaring. So I had to rewrite all of these beliefs that I had around money because they, those beliefs were holding me back from making the money. Now, do you guys see how that's connected? Yes, no, maybe. <laughs> Anyone still out there? Okay, good. Rachel says yes, yes, yes. Um, I think we lost Wendy. She got disconnected. I use my lip gloss. Okay, now I want you to consider as we go into your homework. Um, you're probably thinking, you know what? I do want to do, I do want to create something incredible in my life. And I'm just not sure how to get control over what's going on in my mind. Right. Am I, do some of you feel that way? Ashley says yes. <laughs> Melissa says yes. Okay. Now Grace says yes. Sean Ray says yes. Um, well, so you guys, here's the deal. And I was sharing this with Karen today over our lunch meeting. And I, and I said to her at that time, dang, I wish we were doing this on the zoom right now. Um, but one of the things that I said to her that really changed my thinking, and I discovered this way back then, like um, over 10 years ago, is there is a meditation teacher. Her name's Kelly Howell. You may have heard me talk about her before. Kelly Howell. She teaches meditation. And what it does um, is it's a guided meditation. So she's talking to you through the 30-minute meditation. And at that time, I had decided that if I was going to create what God called me to do, that I needed to get control. <laughs> I don't know if you guys say control, but I needed to do a better job of herding the wild horses in my mind. <laughs> because up until that point, I spent a lot of time commiserating and whining about the weather, com complaining and whining about things going on in our society, watching the news and getting scared out of my mind about all the meth addicts. I mean, it was insanity, right? That's not going to produce the freedom, is it? 
So first and foremost, I decided to do a digital detox and eliminate from my life the negative influences. So for me, that was any television watching. I can, I can gratefully say, though, that we were on food stamps, so we couldn't afford any cable TV. <laughs> and, and that I was, uh, you know, whatever. So movie watching, TV watching, news watching, newspaper reading, magazine reading, all of those things, goodbye, no time for you. Because if you think about it, those people are out there trying to sell you their crap, right? These are just vehicles for advertising to sell you junk. So once you realize that, that your brain is wired for entertainment, your brain doesn't care. Your brain does not care if it's a news program you're watching or Kelly Howell's Universal Mind Meditation. Got it? Your brain only wants to learn. That's how we're wired. That's the beautiful thing. You can use it to your advantage. So I just saw Amber. Amber? No. Yes, Amber. Hello. Jeez. I'm so sorry. Amber, can you unmute yourself, please? Amber Ayton. Prescott, Arizona, calling on you. <laughs> Amber and I met many years ago when we lived in Prescott, Arizona. And uh, you might have to tap your phone and unmute it. All right. I'm, I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. Yay. Bye. It there took me a while to figure it out. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited you're on here with us today. I know. I'm so excited it worked out. I've been listening to them after, after the fact for the last few days, but um, today it worked with my schedule to be on. You were Just, meant to be here because I needed yeah. you to share today. <laughs> so good. So, so tell everybody, you, you commented that you've been listening to the Kelly Howell. Yes. You mentioned her at some point last summer. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it was like right at the right time for me. It was one of those moments where I was, you know, in my life, I've had these up and down ebbs and flows of success. Yeah. Just realizing like there's something in me that sabotages it every single time. Yeah. <laughs> and just feeling that kind of craziness of my own mind of, um, of like, okay, like knowing that I needed to do something different. So I was like, you know, in that process of just researching, like listening to all the good things and finding that you know, those things. And then when you shouted her out, I was like, I, I gave it a listen and I loved it. And, um, it just resonated with me immediately. And it was really at that time too, that I decided I just could see so clearly, like you said, the wild horses of my mind. And yep. I shamelessly was like every spare moment I'm going to be yes. putting in good things all the time. So, you know, listening to Callie Howell before I go to bed, um, listening to a Bob Proctor meditation in the middle of the day. If I'm like yep. just washing dishes, I would be listening to something because I could see it just became very, very apparent um, how wild the mind was. And even apparent like that 90% of kind of BS that was going on and how much negativity was there, even though I felt like I was a really positive person. <laughs> yes. I know. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. It was and really the truth good. comes out. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> the truth comes right? out. Well, but in that, but right there again, right there, what you just shared is consciously in your brain, you're telling yourself, I'm a really positive person. But then your results right. are this kind of ebb and flow, like the tide of the yes. financial gain. Like you're, yes. it sounds to me that you were always like making just enough. Yes, totally. Totally. Yep. And I, yep. I, I went through mm -hmm. a divorce three years ago. I don't know if you know that. Or it's been five years actually now. And it's been a, it's been a more tumultuous up and down since the divorce. But I've always, I've always managed to make it. Like Grace has never left me entirely hanging. But just that yeah. process, realizing how strenuous it is and how it doesn't have to be that strenuous, you know, just that truth that God does want me to be blessed. So why am I getting to this point, you know, like where I'm walking the tightrope and feeling, yes. you know, that feeling of, uh, that insecurity and that stress, it can be, you know, where it's almost like you're in this survival mode, you know, and it's like, no, 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 I'm here. I'm not here for that. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, you yeah. were, you were created for abundance. Yes. A hundred percent. And isn't yeah, it interesting so how we, we, we are created for abundance and yet we, <laughs> create a lot of drama in our lives don't we <laughs> right like, to, like we always right. play so th i always say there's some degree that we play in every challenge and drama that we have ex that we're experiencing right a hundred so yeah and it's so cool once you start to grasp the potential 
of, yeah. uh, and the power that you have in your own mind, which you can access it at any time. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Mm -hmm. So tell everybody then, as you've been doing the, the um, universal mind meditation or, or, or one of her others, um, right. what have you seen shift for yourself? Did you notice anything shift even during the first 30 days of doing that daily? Um, I did. What's crazy is after I started doing that, then I, and I was kind of, I've been a yoga teacher, you know, for 20 yep. years and was doing that. And I was just getting to this point of like, with all humility being like, okay, God, how do I serve, you know, without this attachment mm -hmm. to it being a different way. It's kind of like how you were saying, and just feeling like that, that feeling of I'm tapped into this, this, this place of wisdom and like how, you know, whatever it looks like. And so then actually within that, I, um, a friend of mine, the very next day I had this like, you know, eat, pray, love moment on the floor in my bathroom where I was just like, okay, like I need it, I need it to be different, you know? So like how God just give me the, show me the way. And literally my yeah. friend came over the very next day. She's like, I just felt like stopping in. I was in town and I want to see what you're doing. And I was telling her what was going on. She's like, oh, you should do the business with me. And she's in a network marketing company that I've now mm -hmm. been a part of um, yeah. since then. And it's been really good. And it's actually been really, um, successful for me and I'm you know I'm have my sights set on on higher goals with it and want it to get to this place and it feels really really great and I feel like since listening to that that was a big one and also yeah. just the sense I didn't I feel like I that baseline of trust in the connection I feel like her meditations really do hit on the subconscious mind really powerfully and mm -hmm. so I didn't find myself as regularly going into those places of like fight or flight anxiety that was happening yes. before. And that was like really clear in that first 30 days where I yes. felt like I had this, these thought patterns to, you know, to we, to le relax into, to lean into, you know, as I yes. was up against things. Yeah. Well, and it, it's interesting, I think, because a lot of times people think there's some magic formula or somebody's lucky and that's how they create success. But the truth is <laughs> that I believe when you answer the calling and then you take action inspired in faith and then you harness the power of your thinking, of course, you're going to succeed because you were designed for success and abundance. Right. Right. Yeah, it's very formulaic. Right. <laughs> that's that's why we say it fall. It's a universal law because yeah. it is like 100%. like two plus two is four, just mm -hmm. like that. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for unmuting today. Yay! Thank you so much, Elise. I love you so much. I love what you put out there, and you're <laughs> like you're one of my. I tap into you and tune into you for inspiration and and movement and vision. So it's. Yay. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm glad. So much gratitude for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for you too. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Well, thank you. Um, so this is awesome, you guys. I think that you have a lot of takeaways, and I'm going to pause to see if anyone has any questions. But essentially, your homework, your challenge is adopt a daily meditation practice. Listening to Kelly Howell's Universal Mind or her meditation called the secret to attracting wealth. Now I've given you the secret It's what you focus on. It's what you think about is what you will create. So if you're not happy with your life today, just remember you've created a lot of it through your thinking. If you want to change your life for the future, you need to change your thinking starting today and being here, writing these things down, having the awarenesses, the breakthroughs, don't forget to go on and hashtag breakthrough. If you've had any breakthroughs today, I will post our day four where you can access this recording later and then you can um, comment for each other. All right. So let's see, Rachel. What is... Oh, that's such a good question. What if you are in a situation where the TV is always on and the energy is negative and it's not your personal space, but you must be there? Um, I would wear my earbuds. <laughs> See, <laughs> I would, because then you get to choose what you listen to. Because remember, whatever you fill your mind up with will influence what you believe, which will influence your actions, your moods, and what you create in the world. Okay. So that's what I would do. I'm looking for my other, I have another headset. I'll show you it too. But I, I have this headset. I don't use it very often. I just had it in the car, so I popped it in. 
and then I use one of these Bluetooth headsets. Um, at night when I fall asleep, I will listen for a bit on my headset until I get tired and then I'll take it off. I won't listen to it then after that. But I would recommend that when your hands are busy and your mind is free, you are listening to something that's going to create freedom for you, okay? Remember, you can be a creator or a consumer. It is your choice. You can be a creator or a consumer. It is your choice. So I choose to listen to what helps me to create what I'm meant to create in the world, okay? Anybody else, any questions? Comments, aha moments, don't forget, I will post day four. You will go on there and you can um, do your comment posts and just comment, hashtag breakthrough. <laughs> and here's the other thing. If you have kids and you're listening to this stuff, guess who's learning it? And guess what else? They're not learning it at school. So once you have your awakening, which you have now, and you're listening to that at home, sometimes, you know, sometimes I put it on the earbuds because my kids are doing their schoolwork or they might be doing their thing. Um, but a lot of times they're listening to it in the car when we drive. They're listening to it at home. My kids are entrepreneurs. In fact, somebody asked them recently, which college do you want to go to? And my 13-year-old says, I'm not going to college. I'm going to be a millionaire. Um, out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Oh, did I say that? Sorry. <laughs> I just get so passionate about uh, about coaching. Look at how my face is red. Lose. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> okay. Love you guys. I gotta go now. <laughs> we'll see you over on the Facebook page. Love you so much. Bye bye.